Aloha. Welcome to Moving Hawaii Forward. I'm your host, Tim Apicella. Each Tuesday, we examine traffic and transportation issues and see what alternate solutions may be possible to address our growing traffic nightmare. Last week, Scott Wilson, spokesperson for the Honolulu Transit Task Force, was our guest. He made a convincing argument for the case to bring rail down from the elevated guideway and onto the street level. Specifically, he proposed to have the rail cars run at grade level from Middle Street to Ala Moana. Since we barely scratched the surface of that task force report, I wanted to give this report the time and attention it deserves. A few days ago, both the mayor's office and Hart dismissed the contents of the report. Mayor Kirk Caldwell called uh, the conclusions in that report as wishful thinking. The report did go into specific detail as to what changes would be necessary and the associated costs to convert rail cars to travel on the street. The bottom line is the Honolulu Task Force group claims that they can reduce the overall cost of the rail project by $3 billion. Additionally, yesterday another report written by Randy Roth and Cliff Slater was published in the Civil Beat. The report looks at the estimated rail ridership numbers Hart used to convince the public and the city council that an elevated guideway rail system would alleviate traffic from East Kapolei to Ala Moana Center and should be the preferred system to vote on. These estimated ridership numbers became chiseled in granite and have not changed. The report shines a light as to how those ridership numbers are just plain wrong. So this afternoon, I'd like to talk about numbers, cost numbers. I would like to talk about estimated ridership. And to begin with that, I'd like to show my first uh, screenshot, please. There are three kinds of lies, damn lies, excuse me, lies, damn lies, and statistics. Mark Twain wrote that many, many years ago. Uh, I'd like to take that exact quote and try to transform it and apply it to the rail project. Um, there are three types of lies. Low project cost estimates, high ridership projections, and third, overinflated consultant reports that validate lie number one and lie number two. But you know, lie is a very strong word. Um, my mom was very clear. She said there are many four letter words you're not gonna use. And believe it or not, lie was, liar was one of them and hate. She said they're terribly hard and, and very, very strong words. So what do we say when we're looking at this rail project and we, we, we don't wanna use these words. Um, incidentally, the media now is starting to use these words <laughs> as it pertains to uh, certain administrations that are now in place. I've never seen it before, but it's, um, we, we used to use words such as falsehoods, and my favorite, alternative facts, misrepresentations, strategic misrepresentations, and or do we just go back to say lies, damn lies, and the statistics? Uh, let's take a look at the second slide, please. Uh, back in the day, there was a mayor of San Francisco. His name was Willie Brown. And he was the mayor for San Francisco for many years. He retired. And in 2013, he became very, very candid in an interview he was having with the San Francisco Chronicle. And he told it like it is. And uh, I'm going to go through some of his quotes on this because it's, it's fascinating. And I think it really does apply to how we look at our, our project here. News that the Trans Bay Terminal is something like $300 million over budget should not come as any shock to anyone. I suppose we could say news that we started off at $4.6 billion and now we're at an estimated $10 billion should not come as a shock to anyone. Well, it is. Then he said, we always knew the initial estimate was way under the real cost, just like we never had a real cost for the Central Subway or the Bay Bridge or any other massive construction project. So get off it. Perhaps he was having a bad day with a reporter. But the, the quote that really, really focuses in on how I, I see this project is when he said the following. In the world of civil projects, the first budget is really just a down payment. And if people knew the real cost from the start, nothing would ever be approved. Um, our first down payment technically was 4.6 billion. And um, here we are at 10. So maybe he knows something that uh, the rest of the voters didn't know. 
And then last but not least, he said, the idea to, is to just get going. Start digging a hole and make it so big, there's no alternative to coming up with money to fill it in. Well, we certainly are there. We are certainly at a point where we're past the point of no return. We can't go back, and we've dug a very, very big hole, and we are now in the thick of it. So I'd like to take a look at the next slide, please. This was a, a few days ago when Mayor Kirk Caldwell was trying to convince the legislature that it's such a great idea to take the half percent um, general excise tax that is now in place and actually has a, a sunset date and make that um, a half percent GET tax in perpetuity, which is to say there is no end date. So here's a quote um, about him talking about the, the incentive to extend that tax. The legislature is very upset. I'm equally upset. But at this point, it's not about looking backwards and trying to blame and say, I'm angry. We've got a problem. How do we come up with a solution that benefits everyone? And I think part of the solution is sharing of the surcharge. Well, I, I can see why he's upset. Um, you know, Mayor Caldwell actually did serve in the administration under Mufi Hanneman. And so really from the ground level <laughs> to this day, um, we've gone from the down payment of $4.6 billion to now a projected cost of $10 billion. Not only is Mayor Caldwell upset, but I think every taxpayer that's going to foot this bill is equally upset. But what gets me is, in the quote, he said, we need to come up with a solution to everyone's benefit. Um, who's everyone? I, I mean, I can't, I can't imagine if the benefit is to every taxpayer that, that comes around and has to pay this debt. So let's examine who, who everyone is when he says everyone will benefit. Is it the uh, legislature? Is it money to the state that to fill up some of the shortfalls that um, are occurring right now that's in the newspaper right now? Is it to um, add additional dollars to the D Department of Transportation um, Highway Fund? Is it to shore up uh, as the proposal for a, a particular bill right now is to maybe take some of that GET money and uh, fund it for schools since there's shortfall for school funding? Is it to get the city council off the hot, hot seat because they've, um, they've gone along and approved these uh, tax increases all along? They've increased uh, the GET and they've extended the tax dates and they've supported that. They've, ex they've supported the elevated uh, guide rail system and that uh, basically is a Cadillac system. They've supported it all the way along. So does it benefit them that we can come up with this uh, shortfall that we have for the, the rail program right now? Does it support his and benefit his own office? Uh, like I said, uh, Mayor Kirk Caldwell has been on the ground floor on this since day one. He, um, he knows that uh, we came in with a $4.6 billion. He knows that we've had cost overruns. And so does this extension of the get tax get him out of this uh, hot seat? So um, let's look at the numbers. Because I don't think the taxpayers are the direct recipients of the extension of the, of the get tax. I think the, um, the taxpayers are kind of holding the bag. So we're going to take a look at um, kind of the history of the rail budget. In 2006, as I said, the, um, well, as Mayor Willie Brown said, we have a down payment of $4.6 billion. And in 2006, the uh, Federal Trans Transit uh, Administration committed uh, $1.55 billion. And that was to help um, the city and county get this rail project going. In addition to that, we had a half percent general excise tax, and we approved that for 15 years to run from 2007 to 2022. Then, uh, fast forward four years later, in 2010, the estimation of the cost of the project went up to $5.4 billion. Uh, things can pr progress from there, and uh, 2014, we have gone up to $6.5 billion. Fast forward one year from there, and the state legislature 
um, with the recommendation of the mayor's office, we did, in fact, extend the general excise tax an additional five years. So now we are funding it from the 2017 level to 2027. So uh, it seems like things, uh, bad things happen in, in one-year increments. So in September 2016, we then increased the cost estimation to $8.6 billion. And then December 2016, it uh, is accelerated to $9.5 billion. I think what's going on is that right now, the, the cost estimate is $10 billion. And I think Mayor Kirk Caldwell has actually stated it is at least $10 billion. Um, I'd like to just take a look at a report from an audit from the city. And this was an audit report, and the audit report is from the city and county of uh, Honolulu. And um, it was produced by Edwin Young, who is the city auditor. And in <clears throat> April 15, 2016, uh, one point was made that uh, really caught my eye, and it says the following. And, you know, the audit results were recommending a, a number of improvements on how to um, be more efficient with the rail project and, and billing and, and looking at contractors' invoices and, and things of that nature. So, absent the improvements, we anticipate additional cost overruns will occur. More specifically, project cost estimates, details, methodologies, cost assumptions, and unsubstantiated and project managers are not managing actual costs against their budgets. So what the auditor is saying is um, there's mayhem running at City Hall, or excuse me, at heart, as this project's moving forward. Um, if we look at the Honolulu Task Force report, and that was uh, produced in January 2017, and by the way, this report can be found on um, the website savagingtherail.com. The authors of this report was Douglas Tilden. Uh, Douglas Tilden was hired as the first architect um, that uh, was beginning to work on the rail project. He quit after one year, after his criticisms and recommendations were completely ignored. Um, I, I would too, if, if I saw a train wreck coming, no pun intended about the rail, but if I saw a train wreck coming and you are doing your job, your, your fiduciary job as a consultant and trying to um, raise some red flags and those red flags are being ignored and um, dismissed, I suppose I would quit or be happy to get fired a year later anyway. So um, the other author is Scott Wilson. Uh, Scott was on our show here last week. He's an architect and has been for many years, has had his own firm. And for many, many years, he has been you know, recommending and trying to advocate for bringing a rail system on at street grade level. And since uh, 2009, he's been the chair of the task force. And uh, that occurred up to 2012. And the important part of this report is that the cost of $10 billion isn't even still the full cost. And I'd like to get to those exact costs after this commercial break. So the, I'm Tim Apicella. This is Moving Hawaii Forward, and we will be right back. Aloha. I'm Bill Sharp, your host of Asia Review. Watch us every week, every Monday afternoon, for exciting, up-to-date information and analysis about contemporary affairs in Asia. Hi, I'm Stan Energy Man, and I want you to be here every Friday. Noon, thinktechhawaii.com. Watch the show. Be there. I pity the fool who ain't. Aloha. My name is Richard Emery, host of Condo Insider. More than a third of Hawaii's population live in some form of association. And our show is all about educating board members and owners about their responsibilities and obligations and providing solutions for a great association. You can watch me live on Thursdays, 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. each week. Aloha. Welcome back. I'm Tim Apicelli, your host for Moving Hawaii Forward. And before the commercial break, we were talking about uh, rail costs. And one of the things that uh, I find very interesting in the Honolulu uh, Transit Task Force report is um, 
the fact that this rail project at only one third completed has over um, it's it's over its budget by 76 percent and so at uh, this stage of the game where that one third of construction was really just um, mostly on agricultural lands. Uh, it's been complex once we get into Pearl City, but uh, for the first third, the, I hate to say it, but the easy part has been completed. And if the easy part's been completed at 76% over, uh, over cost, what does that say about the second, uh, the, the second third and then the third third? So in this report, uh, I find it interesting that they took, uh, um, they took a very, I think, a very simplistic approach, easy to understand approach, and to say, well, if the first third was 76%, and then we assigned the second third to 76%, and we assigned the last third to 76%, that equals 228%. So 228% of the initial 5.4 billion, um, or actually it would have been 106% of the 4.6 billion, remember that down payment of 4.6 billion, um, we're way over. So if you take 5.4 billion and 228%, that equals $12.3 billion. That is certainly uh, a great, <laughs> a, a much higher number than uh, current, um, Mayor Kirk Caldwell's $10 billion. So we may not see the end of this yet. And that's what I think uh, concerns me. And I have a funny feeling it's going to concern a lot of um, taxpayers here in the state. Well, excuse me, on Oahu. Because right now, mostly uh, it's Oahu that's paying for this rail project. And um, it's coming out of our pockets. So if the first third was as easy as it appears to be, um, Let's look at what's going to happen to the last five miles. We're going to be in a situation where construction is going to be going along the waterfront. It's going to be um, a high water table. You're going to have unstable coral soils. So I'm sure the geotech reports <coughs> have pointed that out, that uh, you're going to need increased concrete and uh, substantial footings to be cast and um, installed. And further than that, you're going to have the, the issue of contending with businesses that are going to contend with that last five mile of, of rail line. And certainly, we're going to have noise impacts, sound impacts. You're going to have closures. How is that going to affect their business? Uh, similar to what we saw in Pearl City. Um, some business were, were doing quite, quite poorly as far as um, trying to get customers to come in because uh, parking and access was to their front door was absolutely horrendous. So we have the businesses to contend to um, with this last five miles. We're going to have to deal with um, the, uh, the, the issue of uh, preservation of historical findings, i.e. burial sites. Um, how many along the way will we find and to what degree does that, um, and rightly so, um, will that delay the project and, and increase costs? And then last but not least, um, Lo and behold, someone forgot to talk to Hiko along the way and, and talk about how we're going to um, replace or remove some of the electrical lines along, along Dillingham. So those are just uh, a few items that we're going to contend with in those last five miles. And I'm wondering if <laughs> the assumption of 76% for that last third is, is even close. I'm afraid it's not. Um, let's talk about what the actual cost to the taxpayer is going to look like. Uh, slide five, please. I call this the real cost sharing formula. And um, this kind of looks at the amount of money that's been collected thus far from the general excise tax. And it, it is from the beginning of when the tax was collected. Remember, it was that extra half percent. And it was um, raised. And uh, so from the time that it started to 2016, <clears throat> excuse me, we have a um, a revenue that's been generated of $2.1 billion, $2 billion, okay? So how does that translate to people who are going to be, you know, who have already paid that tax? It's not that they're going to pay it, they've already paid it. So you take $2.1 billion and you divide it by a million residents. Um, right now, Oahu probably has about 977,000, somewhere, but we're just going to round up to a million residents on Oahu that's, that's paid this excise tax. So that comes down to $2,100.
And then we're going to reduce that a little bit further because um, if you think about it, tourists that come to our, our, our state and to our island here, they're actually paying for everything they buy, uh, they're paying the, the general excise tax as well. So it's estimated that about 30% of that uh, should be subtracted from what already has been paid from residents of this island. So 30% of $2,100 is $630. So lo and behold, you take the $2,100 minus $630, and each individual from the time the get tax has been implemented, that half percent, to the end of 2016 is $1,470. Now, if you're a family of five, um, that's going to equate to $7,000. $350 that you've already paid. Um, I hope you didn't realize it because you paid it. And so, you know, this, this perception that Hawaii is so expensive, oh my gosh, it's so expensive. Well, it is expensive and it is an embedded cost that, that excise tax is embedded. It, it, it shows up in everything, whether you buy a car, you sell a home, um, everything you buy has an eventual gradual push to that excise tax. And family of five has paid over $7,000 for it. So let's, um, let's recall Mayor Caldwell's statement that we played a little bit earlier, and that was, let's find a solution to everyone's benefit. Well, I question everyone's benefit. Everyone's benefit that just paid $7,300 that um, basically, <laughs> unbeknownst to them, they've been paying. Um, is that the benefit that uh, Mayor Caldwell was referring to? I'm not quite certain. So if you're a family of five, and by the time this project is done, and that's based on $10 billion. Now remember, we said, oh, this thing could go much higher than $10 billion, and it probably will. So based on the $10 billion, if you look at the cost of this project from start to the very end, and that is the end to, I believe, Ala Moana, not UH. Now, I may be wrong on that point, but uh, I believe it's to Ala Moana. The estimated cost for a family of five will be $25,000 and $25. Now, who knew this? Did we know that cost was going to be embedded in our, in, out of our, our family's budget um, when we voted yes for this? Did we know that? Well, who knew it? Well, the types of Mary, Mayor Willie Brown knew it. Um, certainly, Mayor Mufi Hanneman knew it. Certainly, because Kirk Caldwell worked with Mufi Hanneman, Kirk Caldwell know, knew it, and he knows it today. And that's what concerns me, is that He's, uh, for lack of better words, he's pandering to the legislature. He's trying to incentivize the legislature to uh, pass this tax and put it in perpetuity with no end date, knowing full well that um, this cost or the cost of this project was way over from the very beginning. So um, let's then look at um, another aspect of cost. Because it's not just a construction cost, there's also cost of revenue. And that is to say, to offset the, 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 the cost of the project, we're going to bring in revenue. Oh, how are we going to do that? Well, we're, we're going to have ridership. Okay, great. How much ridership are we going to have? Well, let's, let's look at the numbers because I find them almost, um, well, I find them hilarious, actually. I find them a little bit sad, yet hilarious. And what this chart represents is the, the cities which have um, a, a rail system in place, where you have it by population of millions and daily riders. And um, what you'll see there immediately is that the population, which, most, which is similar to Honolulu, uh, of a million or up to two million, and that would be San Jose, New Orleans, Salt Lake City, Buffalo, Honolulu, their actual ridership on, on their transit system is one, you know, one third or a half of, of what our projections of 116, 300. Uh, that's the projection that Honolulu has used to say that's how we're going to pay for this thing or partially pay for it. And I find those numbers a little bit offsetting because um, in the final environmental impact statement, their consultant, Parson Brickerhoff, said that that ridership of 116,000 will, will be consistent and that will happen. Unfortunately, um, Parson Brickenhoff has a really, really bad record of, of guesstimating, um, number one, cost of a project, and more importantly, cost of ridership. Uh, the uh, Parson Brickenhoff used the, uh, the uh, uh, San Juan in Puerto Rico 
as one of their closely associated um, projects that most likely mimicked uh, the Honolulu Rail Project. It was an elevated system. And interesting enough, that system was projecting 114,000. Well, lo and behold, San Juan only gets 27,000 um, ridership on their rail system, which is 76% less than what they had projected initially. So how is Honolulu going to come up with 116,000 uh, as far as ridership? And I'm not certain they're going to. And that was the point of the report that was um, published in the Civil Beat. It was called, titled The Impending Honolulu Rail Ridership Debacle. Again, the authors were uh, Cliff Slater and Randy Roth. And it appeared on February the 13th, 2017. And it goes into great detail of why that ridership number is just not reality. So where do we go from here? What, what, what do we do? Um, let's, let's just look at one thing here that raised the fares. That is one idea that transit agencies say we're going to do anyway because it's a brand new rail, so we're going to raise fares. Well, when you raise fares, people go, I, I can't afford that. I can't go on the rail. I just can't afford that fee. And then so you have a, a shift that you don't have your initial ridership numbers. That retracts. And there you go, well, now we're not getting the revenue because we have less ridership. So you go into what is called in the transit world the death spiral of fare increases. Every time there's a fare increase, less ridership. So you try to compensate for the, uh, the loss of revenue, so you increase the fare a little bit more. Then there's more ridership that has been, um, that's not taking the rail or, or transit. So that's a real problem. And um, that is going to be a reality here if Hart continues to stay on the fact that they think they're going to get 116,000 riders on this thing weekly. I think that if you look at the Star Advertiser and um, Civil Beat, you're seeing a lot more articles about the extension of the half percent. I would encourage you to go to Civil Beat, read the article about um, the rail projections. I would encourage you to go and look at the Honolulu Transit Task Force report. And I would encourage you to talk to your, your representatives and say, hey, wait a minute, this thing is going to cost us a lot more than we ever believed. And I think by all of us trying to do that, we may have someone that actually will, will pay attention to us. And maybe, maybe the, um, the state and the, the city council and the mayor's office will actually take a look at bringing the rail down to street level and saving $3 billion. By the way, that's the amount that we're over budget right now, $3 billion. So um, thank you for joining me this week, and I appreciate it. We'll see you next Tuesday. I'm Tim Apicella, and this is Moving Hawaii Forward.